All right, part three, tornadoes. And this is the one that people tend to get interested in, tornadoes. We see them, we've heard about them. If you live in the Midwest, you know every year we have to worry about them. A tornado is a violent storm. It is basically a rotation of air, okay? And it comes down from the clouds. It is so strong, it can be 200 miles an hour, okay? Now, tornadoes form in those severe storms with the rotation. And what happens is, sometimes the rotation starts coming down to the ground. And when you see a cloud starting to do that, it's a funnel cloud. Once that funnel cloud hits the ground, then it's a tornado. Okay. So these normally form in thunderstorms. They can also form in hurricanes because hurricanes can have very strong thunderstorms as well. So here's what happens. We talk about these strong uh, multi-cell uh, her, or thunderstorms that have these mesocyclone rotations. Sometimes the rotation is so strong that it starts to come down and forms the funnel cloud. And once that funnel cloud hits the ground, it's a tornado. And as to how fast it goes, it depends on the strength of this rotation, but it can be extremely strong. So here you see right here the tornado coming down. This was taken in Colorado. Now, I had mentioned at the very beginning of the lecture that the EF5 is the strongest. EF stands for Enhanced Fujita. Fujita. He was the scientist that developed the scale of how do we rate them. And here's the thing. Tornadoes are so strong, and they happen so randomly, in a sense. It's very hard to actually measure the direct wind speeds. One, we're not always in the right place at the right time. And two, tornadoes are so strong that if you actually had something that would measure it, like a wind, like an anometer, it might destroy it. So we actually have to look at the damage done by the tornado to know how strong the winds were. This is why many times you'll see that there was a tornado last night in this city, and they'll say, initially we think it's this strong, and then a couple days later they'll say how strong it really was. What happens is scientists go out and actually look at the damage done, and they just say, oh, it's done this, this, and this, then it's an E3 or E4. So here is the rankings from E0 to EF5. So the lowest ones do very little damage. Maybe they break a few branches. Winds are only 68 to 85 miles an hour. I say only. That's the same speed as a hurricane. All the way up to the EF5, where the winds are over 200 miles an hour. Cars fly through the air 100 meters. That's the length of a football field. You can see that the vast majority of, her of tornadoes, 80% of them are the zero or one. So mild to moderate damage. About 20% are pretty strong. The two strongest categories... About 1%. And I think on average only one EF5 per year in the United States. So we have the most tornadoes of anywhere in the world, and Florida has the most. And it's not that other parts of the world don't have tornadoes, it's just that the United States has the right blend of geography and climate to allow it to happen. And so our thunderstorms and tornado season is mainly the spring and summer, April through July. Happens in the Great Plains. So this is the area of Texas, uh, Oklahoma, Kansas, that whole area in the center part of the country. They call that Tornado Alley because it has the right conditions, the right type of air masses meet there. Remember we talked about maritime tropical, uh, all these different types. Even though Florida has the most, that's because of the hurricanes. If you took out the hurricane aspect of it, then Great Plains, Tornado Alley would have the most couple of characteristics that usually happens during the spring and early summer. It can happen during the winter, not too common. It normally is in the afternoon, and that's because usually we have thunderstorms in the afternoon because you've had all day for the sun's energy to work. And most tornadoes are pretty small, about 100 feet across, although there one, have been ones that are as big as a mile. And even though hurricanes are spinning very fast, on a map they're only traveling about 30 miles an hour, usually. Now most Hurricane, tornadoes do not last long. They maybe go for two miles on the ground, about five minutes they didn't break up. There have been a couple that have been six hours and just huge paths across the country. So it really does vary. So again, the most tornadoes happen right here in the central United States and in Florida. Now that's not to say it doesn't happen in other areas. There is some in Europe and Paris and Australia, but by far the most here. And we have the right characteristics. There's this continental polar, so cool, dry air, plus 
continental tropic, warm, wet air, and then maritime tropic, very warm, moist air, and they all meet right here in the Great Plains. So that leads to the right conditions for multiple tornadoes to form. So, just like we had our lecture on, you know, lightning safety, now we have the lecture on tornado safety. This one, actually, I, I may joke about it, but these are, if you live in the Midwest United States, you should know these, because we hear these quite a bit. Oftentimes, you'll hear, see there's tornado watch or tornado warning. They'll have thunderstorm watch or thunderstorm warning. The National Weather Service, it is a government agency, they monitor the weather, and they make announcements. And there's a difference between a watch and a warning tornado or any, is if there's a tornado watch or any other type of watch, that means the conditions are right. We know what conditions are needed to make a tornado. So a watch means that the conditions are there. It's favorable. In other words, be aware. The warning, that means that it's happening. So when a tornado warning is issued for Cook County, that means that in Cook County, there is a tornado or we see one happening. So if there's a thunderstorm watch, a thunderstorm could happen, but a warning means it's coming. So with tornadoes, a couple of things. Basically with a tornado, the best way to look at these is you need to get far away from things that can be blown at you in the wind. So you need to get away from windows, away from outer walls, go down below ground, someplace that's the best, down below and out of the way. Now, if you are lucky, you have a basement, you can get down there in time. But if you don't have a basement, get to the lowest floor. Get away from things that are heavy that could fall on you, like refrigerators or windows that could break. A lot of people will go to a closet, right? Or some people say get into a bathtub if it's not on the exterior wall because a bathtub, right, big metal tub, you're hiding it. Or put a mattress over top of you so that if things get blown at you, you have kind of a cushion. Now, what if you're outside? That does happen. Do not try to drive away from it because tornadoes can actually outrun your car. Sometimes they can actually go on the ground and then jump and hop and come back down again. And they're very unpredictable. So don't do that. The best thing to do is just get out of the car, get down, put your head down below the windows, or even get maybe down below in a ditch or get under get underneath something. Now, this right here is one of the most uh, one of the most important advancements in tornado detection in the last 50 years. It used to be with tornadoes, the only way we knew they happened was if somebody saw it, right? We could see them. Other than that, we had never knew for sure if they were going to happen. Now, here's the thing. If no one can see the tornado coming, then how do you know to evacuate? Because the more time you have, the better. And a lot of tornadoes will happen at evening. If a tornado comes by at night, there was no way to see it, right? Now, with Doppler radar, this is a relatively new in, in invention. So in the last 25, 30 years, this has revolutionized how we can monitor and also safely predict tornadoes. This shows wind speed. The darker the color, the faster the speed. And it shows us wind direction. And so we can actually see right here a swirl starting. And this is called a tornado hook. This little hook right here tells us that we have very strong circulation. Very strong circulation. Which is indicative, usually, of a tornado. So we can see this on the radar. And now, with this, we can predict that this area here in the path of the storm is also in the path of a tornado. This has saved numerous lives since the 1990s when it started to become common. All right, we'll pause right here for the next video because then we're going to move on to hurricanes.